Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and welcome back to another review. <clears throat> this is thanks to Michael Escobar, who had sent me a few films, including this film, 30 Days of Night. <clears throat> a vampire film, I know there's been a sequel, but I'm not really interested in the sequel at all. Directed by David Slade, who, direct, who made a film called Hard Candy, which I didn't mind Hard Candy. Thought Hard Candy was an interesting film. And Third Days of Night, I believe it's based on a comic or a graphic novel. I haven't read the graphic novel. Not really interested in, but I do like this movie. I've seen this movie before <clears throat> once a long time ago. And Third Days of Night has a good idea. I mean, interesting premise. <clears throat> and a small, lasting town. 30 days of night is a natural phenomenon. I mean, that is a really cool idea. The fact it takes place in Alaska in the cold. It's a beautiful looking movie. Uh, David Slade and company, the role is the DP. They shot a really good looking movie. It was a very nice looking film. A lot of great uh, wide shots, especially in the daytime or even at nighttime. <coughs> That's what I would say. It's a very good looking movie. <coughs> And for up this upcoming month, it's going to be 30 days a night. There's not going to be sunlight for an entire month. <clears throat> and so this mysterious character, played by Ben Foster, comes into town. And Josh Hartnett, who I don't mind Josh Hartnett as an actor. I don't mind him. <clears throat> I like Halloween H2O. I don't mind the faculty. I liked his character in the faculty. I actually don't mind Hollywood Homicide. I know I'm one of the only people in the world who likes that movie, but I don't mind that film. <coughs> I think I saw that in the theater. I liked the film. <coughs> I don't mind Josh Hartnett as an actor. And he plays the sheriff. And he's, all these sort of strange things start happening where they find a bunch of burned up phones in, like, in an area. And then someone has killed all the dogs. You see a little bit of that. <clears throat> and this film is definitely a bloody movie. It's definitely an R-rated film. So these strange things start happening. You get an idea that Josh Hartnett and his woman, Melissa George, have split ways. And Melissa George wants to get to an airport, but can't. Is late. <clears throat> And then they arrest this guy, Ben Foster. And Ben Foster pretty much saying that, you know, death is coming. And then all hell breaks loose. And these vampires are really fucked up. I mean, I don't know if you can really see it there. <clears throat> or there. But it's like they did something with their eyes. So their eyes are, I don't know if they're further apart or... They did something... Which I thought, if that's CGI work, then that's CGI work that is well handled. Because <clears throat> they did something with the way the eyes are spaced out. So it's a quite a different look for a vampire. And then the teeth are shark. It's like a shark teeth. <clears throat> so I thought the vampires were pretty well done. Definitely a serious vampire movie. <clears throat> and definitely a, a violent, gory vampire movie. Which, uh, that's always cool. I thought the cast did a good job. I thought Josh Hartnett and Melissa George were fine. Uh, yeah, this guy was sort of a loner, and he has a really good scene with his tractor. It looks like a tractor that almost has like a big chainsaw at the in the front. The actor's name was uh, Mark Boone Jr. I remember him in John Carpenter's Vampires. I think he's the guy that Another vampire movie that he dies in, where the and John Carpenter's vampires, he's a guy that gets this split in half. <clears throat> it's a violent death in this movie too, so I don't know what it is, but uh, sorry, folks, still under the weather. I do apologize for that. But uh, all hell breaks loose. 
I mean, one thing I gotta say that I didn't care for in this film was there's a lot of this fucking shit, and that's that's my, doing mildly. I some of the shady cam. You just go why? I mean, stop with the shady cam shit. I've said that a thousand times. <clears throat> Unfortunately, that happens a lot, so that's one thing I gotta say I, I did not like <coughs> was the shaky cam shit. And as the movie goes on, <coughs> um, there's a point with Josh Hartnett and his girl is in the like a police truck. But then the vampires actually take it and tip it over. And then the, the other guy saves them by hitting them with a snowplow. <clears throat> One thing leads to another. They hide in an attic. The vampires use this girl as bait. Judge Hardnett, you know, being the sheriff, he wants to help out. He finds another guy, finds out that guy is a vampire. And has to cut the guy's head off. And that's where you find out that the only way to kill these guys is to cut their heads off. <clears throat> Sounds like a zombie movie in that way. Uh, <clears throat> then you have like one guy's dad who has Alzheimer's and stuff. He leaves, and the guy goes after him, and they get taken away. Uh, Blazer comes to go to the store for supplies. You have this vampire girl who I thought was kind of a bad actress. I know it's a kid actress, but I thought she did a bad job. But uh, her head gets taken off, which <clears throat> you know it does break some rules that you're not supposed to do, like you know killing dogs or here you know killing a kid, even though it's a vampire kid. But the fucking shaky cam is annoying. <clears throat> And throughout the film, I thought it was a well-shot film. I liked the setting of the film, being in Alaska, the way they used the snow, the way the shots looked, the photography looked. I thought it was really uh, slick. You tell there was some money behind it. It didn't look cheap at all. Just some really good-looking shots. I thought the cast did fine. Josh Hartnett, Melissa George. Uh, what was that guy? Mark Boone Jr., Danny Houston as the main vampire. I thought the cast did a good job. <clears throat> Dude did some blaze stuff. Bad stuff, not only the bad stuff is uh, the shaky cam, but <clears throat> it seems like a lot of times, even though once in a while they'll say how much time has passed, you don't really buy that all this takes place in an entire month. Like It almost seems like it takes place in a week. That's what it feels like or seems like, that this shit takes place in a week. Because, <clears throat> I don't know, just the way it, it happens, just the way, I don't know if it's edited or the way it's done, <clears throat> it just seems like the film doesn't really take place during 30 days. It seems like, oh, wait, wait, what? It's 17 days later? What now? What? Like, so I get that reaction, like, Like, within a certain amount of time, like, to flip that, Dawn of the Dead, the original Dawn of the Dead, you could tell a lot of time took place. Clearing the store, or clearing the mall, and then getting to a point where, you know, the entire place is set up, and they have routines, and, you know, so on and so forth, they have the mall to themselves. <clears throat> like, you could tell time has went by. Here... If they said that this film, if the events in this film took place in a week, you would have bought it just as much, or maybe even more so, than the fact that this took place in 30 days. <clears throat> just I'm like, these vampires, you tell me in 30 days, they wouldn't look through every single fucking house in this town? Do vampires sleep? I don't know, do vampires sleep? Wouldn't they look through every nook and cranny and tear the, if Because at the end, they don't burn the whole place down to the ground. 
<coughs> that's their point. They don't burn the place to the ground. So why don't they tear through every single building? It's not that big of a town. You have 30 fucking days. I think these vampires can do it. It's not like just two or three vampires. There's like at least a dozen of them, it seems. And again, you're trying to tell me that they, again, <coughs> they're super strong. They can't just tear the shit. Tear the shit out of a building. <laughs> then go in this one. Tear the shit out of that building. Go in this one. Tear the shit out of that building. You never really get a sense of that. So, to me, the 30 days a night, it maybe would have been a bit better if it was a week or such. Do you have a sort of a time frame like a, that I could believe in or that I could relate to? Or I don't know how it's the word. It just the 30 days thing. I'm like, really? This is all that happened? 30 days? Like, these vampires didn't go through every single place and. Didn't do the ah, just, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Like I know what it is, but I don't know how to explain it. I don't think the thirty days was conveyed as well as they could have or should have. <clears throat> but uh, just to a point where <clears throat> Josh Hartnett tells him to go to this police station, and he's going to create some diversion, gets these UV lights, hurts the, the Danny Houston, the, the main bad guy, villain, the main vampire's woman who he has to kill. Josh Hartnett gets saved by this guy, Mark Boone Jr., with this big tractor, and he had that scene where he has like a tractor, but he has like a large chainsaw or something in the front. Fucks up a couple of them with a shotgun and such. Then for some reason he drives into the fucking store and I'm like, why does he drive into the store? <clears throat> I mean, if they specified, oh shit, I can't steer. Or, oh shit, I can't do anything now. He just drives into the store. Why? Why doesn't he just turn around and keep doing it? Or, get the fuck out of there. Or, get away. Or run, or get to the chopper, or do something. What the fuck is this guy doing? Why is he just driving to the store? There's no dialogue or anything that says otherwise. Oh shit, I ran out of gas, or I ran this. Nothing. <coughs> so he drives into the store, says, you're not going to get me, gets these flares, blows the place up, but he survives, just for the main vampire to crush his head. And I'm like, why? What was the point of making him survive just to get his head crushed? Just because? <coughs> then, uh, the looking. Some. Then, uh, Josh Hartnett is looking for some people. They get this deputy, and he finds the deputy shot his own family. They go to this power station where the other survivors are at. And then this vampire follows them. Yeah, this fight that breaks out in the power station. The deputy, deputy helps Josh Hartnett push this guy into this sort of crusher thing. <clears throat> which fucks up the deputy's hand. <clears throat> and the deputy is turned into a vampire. And Josh Hartnett... He cuts heads off, but like most of the most of the vampires he cuts the heads off of are from the ones who from his group who turned. <clears throat> or his town that turned. But there was this guy the first time he does it, it near the swing, one of his townsfolk who turned to a vampire cuts his head off. The vampire girl, his uh, little brother, cut the head off. I think that was one of the the main vampires group. Uh, another one of the survivors early on becomes a vampire. Josh Hartnett has to cut his head off. And then this deputy's got to cut his head off. I'm like, I would rather like to see Josh Hartnett cut more of the actual vampire's head off, not just the his townsfolk who gets turned. It's like, oh shit, now we're six. Got to cut your head off. Oh shit, now we're found you. Oh, now you're a vampire. Let me cut your head off. 
And right, when they cut the deputy vampire's head off, it's a really good effect. Really bloody. <coughs> I would like to have seen Josh Hartnett act, you know, some of the actual vampire groups. Because there's still quite a bit of them alive at the end of the movie. It's just that Melissa George has this kid who she saved, and they're hiding under this vehicle. This is now when the vampires don't burn up the town. Josh Hartnett says we can't do anything unless he gets some of the deputies' vampire blood and just it in himself, so he has more of their strength. Pretty much fights the main vampire, ultimately punching a hole through the main vampire's mouth and through his head. And the other vampires see that you know they killed their leader, so they run off. <coughs> And the ending, not the most satisfactory. I mean, Grant, okay, Josh Harden is now a vampire, so he's got to die. But he even says, you know, should I go after them? And I'm like, you know, why doesn't he go after them? Why doesn't he go after the other vampires? And would he be able to go after the other vampires? Wouldn't he turn quickly and then kill like everyone else did? <clears throat> he's not Blade. <laughs> So eventually, it's now sunlight, he's with his woman, they share a kiss, he burns up, and then he dies, and then the movie ends. I mean, 30 Days a Night, I like the film okay. <clears throat> I do have problems with the film. I mean, again, there's stuff I like, I thought the cast did fine, I thought Josh Hartnett did fine, I thought the film was well photographed, it was a good looking movie. Um, the score worked for the film, the vampires, I like the look of the vampires, definitely serious, definitely, definitely, definitely not like Twilight, but then you yeah, got shark teeth, I like the look of them, and I thought, you know, the cutting of heads off, okay, cool, and the setting being in Alaska and the snow, cool, but the shaky cam did not help, the the time frame is like it has it been 30 days or has it not been 30 days or I don't know if it's been 30 days okay it says here but I don't really buy the time change because it's really it's been that many days but yet you guys are still good with food it's still good with water bathrooms uh, all that I mean I just <clears throat> I don't buy the the 30 days thing time frame within this movie I don't see it. I didn't comprehend it. I mean, it just one, once in a while you see 17 days later or whatever this later. It's like, really? So I didn't really buy into that. <clears throat> I would like to see some of the actual vampires get killed more. I mean, I guess, you know, Josh Hartnett did ultimately kill the the main vampire, the main vampire squeeze. Him, him and mainly the deputy killed the other vampire, and then they killed the vampire girl. And then that one guy killed a bunch of them with his tractor. I don't know why. It just bugged me when there was just like tons of vampires left that just, you know, they up and left. And I'm like, why wouldn't they come back the next day? Or, you know, <clears throat> won't they be back again someday? Which I guess they didn't. That leads to a sequel, which I don't want to see. But other than that, I like the way it looked. I like the way I like. I thought the cast did fine. Definitely R rated. Uh, yeah, I thought Josh Hartnett did a good job. I thought the acting was good. I thought the definitely R rated and bloody. I thought David Slade did a good job directing the fact with the the picture and the photography and so on and so forth and the setting of the film was cool. I do like the idea. So overall, <clears throat> sorry, overall, I like the film. I just feel that me personally I would like to have seen Josh Hartnett cut up a few more of the actual vampire's heads. But get rid of the shaky cam and the time frame of the 30 days. I think they could have done more with that. They could have done more with that 30 days and that time frame and make it easier, make it more 
understandable or make it more palatable. I'm not sure palatable or what's the right word I'm looking for. And just to me that it wasn't fulfilled all the way through that could have and I think it could have been handled a lot better the whole time frame of 30 days that's just my opinion either way thanks for watching take care and we'll see you later